Welcome to AP Lit Quarantine Edition. This is our eighth video on the ninth prompt, and we are looking at the 2009 question uh, of the prose prompt, which is what the test is going to be on this year. Um, today we are looking specifically for textual evidence that shows something about the values, beliefs, assumptions, biases, and cultural norms of this character uh, named Ludi Johnson. So we're going to read it quickly and then go through and find some textual evidence. It'll be fun. Okay, this is from a book called The Street. There was a cold November wind blowing through 116th Street. It rattled the tops of garbage cans, sucked window shades out through the top of open windows, and set them flapping back against the windows. And it drove most of the people off the street in the block between 7th and 8th Avenues, except for a few hurried pedestrians who bent double in an effort to offer the least possible exposed surface to its violent assault. It found every scrap of paper along the street, theater throwaways, announcements of dances and lodge meetings, the heavy wax paper that loaves of bread had been wrapped in, the thinner wax paper that had enclosed sandwiches, old envelopes, newspapers. Fingering its way along the curb, the wind set the bits of paper to dancing high in the air so that a barrage of paper swirled into the faces of the people on the street. It even took time to rush into doorways and areaways and find chicken bones and pork chop bones and push them along the curb. It did everything it could to discourage the people walking along the street. It found all the dirt and dust and grime on the sidewalk and lifted it up so the dirt got into their noses, making it difficult to breathe. The dust got into their skin, excuse me, the dust got into their eyes and blinded them and the grit stung their skins. It wrapped newspaper around their feet, entangling them until the people cursed deep in their throats, stamped their feet, kicked at the paper. The wind blew it back again and again until they were forced to stoop and dislodge the paper with their hands. And then the wind grabbed their hats, pried their scarves from around their necks, stuck its fingers inside their coat collars, blew their coats away from their bodies. The wind lifted Ludi Johnson's hair away from the back of her neck so that she felt suddenly naked and bald for her hair had been resting softly and warmly against her skin. She shivered as the cold fingers of the wind touched the back of her neck, explored the sides of her head, it even blew her eyelashes away from her eyes so that her eyeballs were bathed in a rush of coldness and she had to blink in order to read the words on the sign swaying back and forth over her head. Each time she thought she had the sign in focus, the wind pushed it away from her so that she wasn't certain whether it said three rooms or two rooms. If it was three, why, she would go in and ask to see it. But if it said two, why, there wasn't any point. Even with the wind twisting the sign away from her, she could see that it had been there for a long time because the original coat of white paint was streaked with rust where years of rain and snow had finally eaten the paint off down to the metal, and the metal had slowly rusted, making a dark red stain like blood. It was three rooms. The wind held it still for an instant in front of her, and then swooped it away until it was standing at an impossible angle on the rod that suspended it from the building. She read it rapidly. Three rooms, steam heat, parquet floors, respectable tenants, reasonable. All right, so this reminds me a lot of the opening of, um, of Mice and Men, which is was written about 10 years before this was. This is 1947, I believe. Um, Mice and Men was 1937. Don't be impressed. I, I googled the 1937 part while you were reading. Uh, and it reminds me of that because it uses something that T.S. Eliot called objective correlative, which is where the outside environment is a reflection of what happens inside someone's head. Um, now, objective correlative is not something you need to know. It's just something that's that I find interesting because uh, it's used so much in literature, especially in modern literature. So quickly going through uh, just the things that describe her, you have suddenly naked and bald. Um, and that, that's a really interesting first description of her, because uh, those are the first real adjectives you get, is naked and bald. Uh, and what does that make you think of? It makes me think of a baby. Like, that's how yeah. people would normally describe a baby. And they don't usually describe adults as naked and bald, necessarily. And it, it uses that same kind of language with cold fingers of the wind touch the back of her neck. Again, like... You can imagine a baby being born, being grabbed by... The, hopefully no one actually does this, but grabbed by the back of the neck. Um, they would have it then, though. Yeah. And the rush of coldness and had to blink in order to read the words on the sign. Again, it, it evokes this very, like, childbirth, like, just being born image. And then you have, again, this interaction that she has with the wind. And so I'm going to change colors so we can look specifically at... Um, how the wind is used in contrast and uh, to help you understand the character a little bit. So going back, um, 
the wind it has a violent assault, um, flapping back against windows, driving people off the street, and then you have down here. Let's see, fingering its way along the curb. It took the time it to rush into doorways. And... Yeah, to find chicken bones and push them along the curb. And it did everything to discourage the people walking along the street. Found all the dirt and grime, making it difficult to breathe. Dust in their and it blinded them, which again is very similar to what happens to her. Uh, entangles their feet, curses at them, uh, and they were forced to stoop and dislodge the paper with their hands. That's what the people did, though, right? Let's make sure. Yeah, we that's got, that's what I'm. That's they're, they're having to respond to it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a character interaction, really, mm -hmm. between the wind uh, being personified in this, and then. Just even in this paragraph, that's the same dynamic where you have the the wind blowing the hair off her neck, um, the eyelashes away from her eyes, and then the sign over her head, and the wind pushed it away from her. So the wind obscures the thing that she's trying desperately to see, keeping it away from her. Um, and then the wind held it still, so it gives her a moment of respite there. And then takes it away so she can read it really quickly so that's kind of the the changing point of the passage where the wind does the opposite thing briefly briefly so what do we learn about the values beliefs assumptions biases and cultural norms of this person Ludi johnson from this passage um she the the evidence objective relatively speaking mm -hmm. um would indicate that she feels attacked or belittled or like the i don't want to be like too cliche but like the whole world's against her i mean that she's out of control like yeah, yeah the world is out of control around her i mean literally what she's doing wind aside is she's going out into the street and looking for a place to live is what it seems mm -hmm. like right um or looking for a hotel room or looking for some place to stay um and this wind has got to be pretty brisk one of the things that jumped out at me as i read that i didn't notice when i was not reading it aloud is that the chicken bones and pork chop bones jumped out at me in a different way. Like pork chop bones are pretty robust mm -hmm. and for the wind to be strong enough to be pushing those down the mm -hmm. street, that's, that's not just a little wind. That's, that's serious. Mm -hmm. I mean, that she's describing almost a wind storm, mm -hmm. which is pretty atypical. It, like I picture this as New York city. I don't know if mm -hmm. that's what we're supposed to pick because of the, um, the, the, the avenues streets. and the streets. Yeah. That's how New York city set up. And, so I don't think about New York City as having literal windstorms. I mean, garbage windstorms is really what is mm -hmm. being described here. Um, which, again, a garbage windstorm feels very apropos to right now. Um, <laughs> but also to to this passage, I mean, she's in a literal garbage windstorm. And that tells you something about her state of mind, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, she, she seems like she's... I mean, the, the baby language up... I'm blocking the screen there. Um, baby language around line 35 in that paragraph um, gives you the implication, to me anyway, that that she has not had a lot of experience doing this. Like, this is the first time that she's had to go through with doing this. And her hesitation in the, it's, where is it, in lines 48-ish, um, why she would go in and ask to see it, but if it said to, why there wasn't any point, mm -hmm. that kind of dithering i guess that would be a, a trait an adjective trait um where that she's not used to have to make used to having to make those kinds of decisions mm -hmm. um, but we know she's she's tough mm -hmm. mentally um and physically in this passage because the wind is trying to stop people from being on the street and yet she's there and she's persisting in a very difficult situation mm -hmm. so it gives you some sense of resilience as well mm -hmm. and at this point, I guess we're not really sure whether her her persistence, her strength is coming from like some deep well of internal fortitude or whether it's born out of desperation. Um, there, there are implications in both directions there. I guess, I guess those things aren't mutually exclusive. You can be, you can have internal fortitude that is born of desperation mm -hmm. too, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if you just noticed our video pop up, we had an error on the previous screen. So there may not be video for the first half of this, um, but thankfully you get the important part, which is the talking and the, the text on the screen. So um, 
hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, you got to see our faces for a whole 45 seconds. So uh, until tomorrow, uh, stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands, wear a mask, and uh, read. <laughs>